Hey guys, Ben here and welcome back to another video on Superman Lois Season 2. Today we're going to be doing my review for Episode 7, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DCTV videos later this year. Okay, so this episode was quite good. I'm gonna say it was one of the weaker episodes this season, I don't think it was that much of a dip. But if I'm going to be nitpicky, I'm going to say I have a few problems that I'll break down throughout this video. However, overall, as a whole, it was an enjoyable episode. So as always, we're going to be breaking down the episode bit by bit, chronologically going through it. And just a reminder for you guys, just before we go into this review, Superman Lois is not going to be on for two weeks. Well, that means just next week and it'll be back the week after. I think that's like March 22nd or something like that. Anyway, two Tuesdays time is going to be back. So one week break, but we will have The Flash because The Flash is starting tomorrow night. I'm going to have my review out for The Flash right away after the episode airs. So that is going to be a consistent thing. And with Superman Lois, it's either going to be after it airs or, you know, the following day, which is what I've been doing recently. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this. So at the start of the episode, we have Superman who awakens to the sight of Tauro. He's in the same cell as him. And you just know that nothing good is going to happen, actually, with those two together in a cell. And so obviously this is Mitch's doing. And so he shows up and he's adamant that he's going to get results and he's literally willing to do anything. And in this episode, you get to see how far he's willing to go. And he actually is ousted from the DoD at the end of the episode because of his actions. I mean, it's not a total surprise considering that he was willing to capture him and place him under the charge of treason when there is no reason to suspect that Superman is treasonous against America or anything like that. So let's move on from that. So we have Lois and the General who talk about everything and they try and figure things out in regards to Superman because obviously Lane was tipped off about what happened to Superman because he used to work there and he has links there, you know, people that used to work with him still work there. So that's the kind of explanation there. So he's going to try and work his way into figuring out a way for Superman to escape. Obviously that doesn't come to fruition in this episode and it leads to what happens towards the end, which we'll get to it when we get there. Over with Lana and Sarah, we get to see them taking out all of Kyle's stuff and obviously Sarah is very upset, Lana's upset and then shortly after this Sarah tells Jordan about her dad moving out and how you know she feels bad for her mum and everything. However the girl that Sarah made out with at camp returns in this episode or actually for the first time so that was pretty cool to see her and it's interesting their connection because they're going to be friends and we're going to be seeing more of her it seems like I'm looking forward to seeing how they explore that because it was an interesting part of the episode for sure and it seemed there was like an actual connection like Sarah felt like she could talk to her which I think is very good because someone in Sarah's circumstance like her mom said she needs to be able to talk to people so at least she found that and obviously right now she doesn't think that she can tell Jonathan everything which again is similar because Jordan can't tell Sarah everything, including the big thing of, oh, my dad is Superman. But I think a lot of what this episode was about was basically people coming to these big realizations. Like, a lot of stuff actually happened when you think about it. Yeah, some big stuff happened in regards to Superman and the superhero rings part of this episode, but a lot happened with the individual characters and their own kind of mini revelations and their steps towards what we're going to be seeing more of later this season. And let's go to Jonathan because he gets in big trouble this episode. He is caught by the police with Candace's ex kryptonite. And in that moment, I was like, well, why aren't you running away? Like, why are you trying to hide it and give it to Jonathan? And why are they standing there as the police approach them? And there is a literal dog sniffing for drugs and everything like that and obviously they can sniff for X kryptonite as well and so he's instantly caught so I just thought that was like a bit silly like I think in that case you would have run away or you would have like quickly walked away if you had that in your possession and so instead Jonathan is caught and Lois gets called from the police and word travels pretty fast Lana finds out about it pretty much instantly 
and it seems that this is going to be a big ordeal and even though the school is threatening that Jonathan is going to be expelled there is still a way for him to potentially not be expelled by exposing who is the person dealing the ex-kryptonite. But as Jonathan says to Lois early in the episode, and he maintains it throughout the whole episode, he's not going to tell anyone that Candace is the person who is the drug dealer or the ex-kryptonite dealer in this case because he cares so much. However, I have to say, I don't think Candace actually cares that much about Jonathan. Every time she shows up, it's kind of a bit like, she likes the idea of him being this kind of big strong footballer and is kind of using him a little bit for you know money obviously her family needs it and that's completely understandable like i understand why she's doing it but i don't know if it's worth jordan being expelled and everyone looking at him in a bad way maybe they're gonna have to find some other way out where it doesn't impact candace and her family but it also doesn't impact jonathan in a huge way like being expelled i don't know what that solution would be but that would obviously be the best solution overall so let's move on to talk about superman so in this episode like i said before him and tau they get into lots of arguments and at one point tau actually gets tortured by a kryptonite device that Lieutenant Mitch Anderson and his soldiers use on him and so Superman is forced to tell Lieutenant Mitch Anderson and soldiers where to find Bizarro in order to save Tao's life at least temporarily but instead of telling the real location he actually lies. He gives an arctic location instead of Tao's desert fortress which Superman has been using in order to talk to his mum and contain Bizarro so Lieutenant Mitch Anderson knows nothing about that. And so let's move on from here. We have Jonathan facing off against Lois. We have a very big fight scene as Lois literally doesn't listen at all. And I mean, her madness is warranted very much so. I mean, she's been lied to this whole time, like Jonathan hasn't told anyone. But it's a fact that kids keep secrets and Lana points this out in the episode when Lois goes to Lana to talk about the boys and the fact that she's unsure why he would do something like that but then Lana consoles her and tells Lois to just listen to him and be there for Jonathan and she learnt this in the past with what happened to Sarah and her reaction to what Sarah did so I really really like the advice that Lana gave and you know the steps that Lana took this episode because you can tell she's going to be a good mayor like at the end of the episode when the old mayor, the current mayor, is trying to rally people in his favor by basically exposing Lana and doing it all at her expense. It just reveals that, you know, she's actually a good person. She cares about family, she cares about community, and he's a phony. He's just trying to expose people at a time when she's suffering. Like, she just found out what happened to Kyle, and he's using this to his advantage. So, I do think Lana is in a really good position to become mayor at this point. And so going back to that Jonathan versus Lois fight, well obviously it's not a physical fight, but it is quite over the top. But it's all believable as Lois won't listen to Jonathan at this point and even Jordan, who is innocent, walks in and he gets shouted at instantly and they're both told to go up to their rooms. And pretty much for most of the episode, Jonathan is just like grounded in his room and he can't do anything else. So let's hop back over to the Superman action because a lot goes down after this. Because as Anderson realizes that he was lied to, that the coordinates, that the Arctic coordinates isn't where Bizarro is. He realized that he's been lied to and he comes up with all these assumptions. He thinks that they are working together and that, you know, the fact that he found the Doomsday suit all shredded up means that, you know he was harboring him there basically and so superman and tauro they have a fight and obviously it comes out of nowhere and you're like what is going on but it's instead of actually them fighting which they do fight they do punch each other and i guess they do definitely have their frustrations it's actually a ruse to escape and so tau is on the loose superman's a fugitive they're both out in the middle of nowhere and they escape from Anderson's custody and so none of the soldiers are able to stop them because they're able to knock out the kryptonite in the room and they get their full powers back. And so I have to say one nitpick for this episode is I do think the direction was a little bit off. I'm not sure if 
to entirely blame it on that, but it just feels a bit different from some of the other episodes. Everything felt a little bit staged. However, there were some points in the episode where it was so good that I feel like it kind of juxtaposed some of those scenes. And I think some of those scenes that felt very fake was like the Mitch Anderson scenes. I felt him going like full on macho, like fighting Bizarro, fighting Superman. I didn't actually like believe it properly because I just don't see him being that powerful, but I get it that it's the X Kryptonite. And then there was just a couple of scenes where it was just like kind of edited a bit weird. So there was something sometimes a bit off. Maybe it was in the cinematography. There was a lot of shots that were underexposed and it was kind of hard to see as well. So I just think overall in terms of filmmaking this episode, it kind of lacked a little bit of that punch and that kind of visual flair that we're used to in Superman Lois. Yeah, there is nice shots scattered in throughout. Like, I mean, look at the sun scene. I thought that was really cool. I thought it looked pretty good. And there is a couple of other shots. However, most of it is kind of a little bit murky in this episode and underexposed. That means that the light isn't of a very good quality and it doesn't show up very well on the camera. And that's just because they've kind of undershot it. Obviously, that could be a choice that they did on purpose but I think it was more about the circumstances of where they were shooting and the fact that they didn't have a good space to keep that light. However, that is just me as a filmmaker being a bit nitpicky and this is like the first time I think I've ever nitpicked Superman Lois for its filmmaking because I think overall it's such a good looking show normally. And so, yeah, I acknowledge there were some really good shots in this episode, but overall, there was something about it that was a tiny bit off and it felt a bit staged and a bit different from normal. So hopefully I'm not going crazy. Like maybe some of you guys thought the same. Maybe you just completely overlooked the filmmaking. You were just like thinking completely about the story. You were completely wrapped up and engaged. Well, I have to say I was really engaged as well. Although at times I had these kind of nitpicky thoughts that kind of jumped into my head. So. That is just a little tangent. Let's go back to the story. Hopefully I haven't like dissuaded you from the rest of this video because I have to say I do like it and I did like this episode. I just thought maybe it was like a tiny step down from the other episodes this season. Okay, so Tauro was a close brother to Bizarro on Bizarro's Earth. That is a crazy revelation that actually isn't talked about much. Like literally... Bizarro also reveals that his wife, so Tauro's wife, tried to kill Bizarro at one point. So who is his wife? And why was this brought up? Like, are we going to explore this? Well, considering what happens to Bizarro with the fact that Lieutenant Mitch Anderson in fact kills him at the end of the episode by using the X Kryptonite and basically overdosing him on it because that is his biggest weakness. It's like if Superman was overdosed on like Kryptonite drugs, right? He would probably die and in this case shockingly the villain of the season who we thought was the villain actually dies and so it's kind of a shocking death and that's like another nitpick because i don't think we finished his story i feel like there was more to his story and yeah obviously they're going to continue his mission to stop ali and ali is the main villain after all however i don't know if this was like the best way for him to go out. I just didn't think that fight scene was very, very good. Like, that was one of the scenes that I was referencing before when I was talking about it, because I just didn't see it as realistic. Like, Lieutenant Mitch Anderson was just, like, grabbing these X Kryptonite things and, like, just smashing it in his face, like, in his hands, and it, I don't know, it just looked kind of staged to me. But that's what happened, and we're going to have to learn to accept that, and... I mean, it's a bit sad. Obviously, we're all really hyped up about Bizarro. I don't think the way that he ended was the best, but that's just my personal opinion. Okay, so let's move on to the next thing. Let's just talk about the rest of Sarah's story in this episode. So Sarah talks to the girl that she made out with at camp, and she convinces her to see her dad once again, and this happens at the end of the episode. We get them interacting briefly before it cuts, and next episode, when it comes, we're going to get quite a bit with them. I think they're going to kind of reconcile and talk about what happened and actually come to terms rather than like Sarah just ignoring him and him feeling all alone. Obviously, 
there is different emotions going on everywhere and obviously Sarah feels especially bad for her mum but right now I think her mum Lana is in a very good place with what she's doing trying to become the mayor I feel that's going to be a big way that she's going to overcome a lot of what she's going through right now but that's just how I see things and so in regards to Lois she goes back and she talks to Jonathan calmly and he tells her everything basically about his jealousy of everyone especially Jordan and his dad about the fact that they're so great and Lois is one of the best journalists in the world is what he is kind of inferring towards and he just feels a bit left out he's supposed to be good at football but he can't even get on the field and so that's the reason why he's been taking X kryptonite to try and be better than his teammate who obviously was caught using X kryptonite as well and that's his main reason but he still won't expose Candace and he sticks to that throughout the entire episode I'm really not sure if I see him actually exposing Candace in the next episode or the episode after I think they're gonna come up with some way of basically helping her because at the end of the day she hasn't done anything that wrong she is trying to help her father and their family it's kind of understandable let's move on so Superman Tao their mom and Bizarro they're all hit by a missile inside the desert fortress and this is where Lieutenant Mitch Anderson comes out of nowhere he inhales a bunch of X kryptonite, uses heat vision, and the big question on my mind was like, how did he find Tao's desert fortress completely out of nowhere? I don't think he had any kind of tracking device. Maybe there was a tracking device on Tao Ro rather than Superman, considering that he's been in their confinement for a long time. Or maybe he has some sort of way to track where Superman or Kryptonians are. Anyway, so they're attacked and Bizarro saves Superman at one point. And likewise with Tauro who jumps in front of Superman and takes like three or four Kryptonite bullets that Mitch tries to fire at Superman. And so he's temporarily incapacitated. And the only way that he's able to save him and regenerate him from dying is by flying him into the sun or right next to the sun and that's where we get that scene i thought that scene was quite memorable actually i thought that was really good and so his terrible condition i actually thought he was dead but he's able to kind of rejuvenate his cells after being exposed that close to the sun and so then we go on we have bizarro versus lieutenant mitch Anderson. and he's constantly using his kryptonite like consistently i mean i talked about that before and he's able to basically overdose Bizarro. He's able to take him out and he's officially dead. And like I mentioned, I thought that was quite anticlimactic in regards to his character. However, it's crazy. Like, it's done. That story is done. Like, we're continuing on with it, but no more Bizarro. I can't believe it. Anyway, let's move on. So Anderson has gone rogue. There's a warrant out for his arrest. Because he killed Bizarro, he didn't even take him as a prisoner, which he should have done in order to get information. And he used government technology by stealing it. And so General Lane is obviously very upset because he's the one that recommended him. And he's going to lead the manhunt for Anderson. So I think we're going to have a confrontation between both of them very, very soon. And so as we head towards the end of the episode, we have Clark to Jonathan and they have a little talk in Jonathan's room and Jonathan is given a roasting. Clark is extremely mad obviously after everything that he's gone through but Jonathan ends up actually crying which is very sad like he realizes he made a big big mistake and we knew this roasting was coming like a long way off but I did not expect it to get to the point where he would start crying so it's definitely impacted him in a huge way. And so that's going to be talked about upon in the next couple of episodes. We'll see how that actually comes to some sort of resolution. And obviously at the same point you have Sarah meeting Kyle. You have the mayor and Lana. And it's kind of cutting back and forth between all of these scenes. Which leads up to the very end scene of the episode. Which is Lieutenant Mitch Anderson. Obviously he's not a lieutenant anymore. But he finds... Ali Alston because he remembers Superman referring to her earlier in the episode as someone dangerous and as someone of interest and stupidly being the idiot that Lieutenant Mitch Anderson is or ex-Lieutenant Mitch Anderson he goes to Ali and he asks her 
what this pendant is and he holds it up and she's like that is the way to change the world. So it's pretty much confirmed they might be working together, but even if Ali betrays Mitch, she's got her hands on both pendants. And remember what Bizarro warned? If Ali gets both pendants and Superman doesn't stop her by either killing her or destroying both pendants, she is going to become a literal god on earth. So that was a great way to the end of the episode. It definitely gives us a lot of stuff to think on as we wait for the next episode. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching. That about does it for this video. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. It really helps out the channel. Also subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos. And you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys later for my flash review. So, goodbye. I see red.